Good morning. My name is Anna Veling. Um, I'd like to talk to you about Smart Auto Comp. Well, you auto completed that um, correctly. I'd like to sh uh, share with you um, uh, something simple that we did to improve upon the precision of auto completion, a very simple idea that may be applicable to some of your applications as well. So what I'm going to do is um, um, explain uh, what the use case that we, had, that we used, um, uh, 9292.nl, which is a public uh, transport site, show to you what it, what it is about, uh, and then show what a normal, naive auto-completion, uh, how it would work, which I've done many times and probably a lot of you as well. And specifically for this uh, use case, um, we felt that the naive implementation would not yield the precision that was high enough. So uh, last year I had a simple idea that turned out to be very powerful and allowed us to do much better semantic tweaking, and I'd like to show that to you and finally give some conclusions. My name is Anna Veling. I'm a freelance uh, search architect. Been busy with Lucene Solo Elasticsearch for many, many years. Give Lucene training, uh, performance optimizations at different customers. And right now, I'm involved in building a large um, uh, website with a 700 million um, uh, index, um, about three terabyte Lucene index on disk, quite a large uh, set using Scala, Elasticsearch, MongoDB, Solar, all the nice buzzwords. So I'm really having fun here at Berlin Buzzwords. But this is about um, a site we built um, last year. Um, well, we, uh, uh, another company uh, built that and they hired me. This is 9292.nl, um, which is the largest public transport site of the Netherlands. Um, and uh, the thing about this site is that it's not only uh, about the trains, the Dutch train system has their own thing, but it's also about all the buses and trams and even how you walk to the nearest bus station. All of that, um, the, those things are combined in one uh, index. So what, what does it do? This is the, this is the largest. Uh, on, a, on a busy day, uh, this site currently handles one million travel advices a day. An enormous, uh, enormous load. And the company Q42 uh, actually built this site um, completely from scratch again last year and launched that and currently building on ma making mobile mobile versions, mobile apps as well for people, because that's usually, of course, when you're waiting for the bus, and that's the type of device that you'll be using. Uh, the routing engine was already existing, so that was already there. But one of the changes, apart from making the site much more user-friendly and more intelligent, um, was also that they wanted to move from multiple input boxes to one input box, as users have been getting used to uh, via Google. Before, they had to type in, this is my, this is the the city, and I want to go to the street, this is the zip code, all of those things. And sometimes, well, people don't want that, or they type it in the wrong order. People just want a single, single input box to rule them all. Um, so this site, this is, this is what it looks, this is what the um, auto-completion looks like. Um, so you start typing something, um, Atten Lur here. It's a nice example, it's the name of a small town in um, Holland, but there's also a town called Lur, and there's also uh, street names called Lure, so it's, it's a very ambiguous. So when you start typing this, um, you can actually see it notices that it's maybe a station or a place and some specific, the library and the city hall of Etten Lure. And when you continue typing um, like a specific um, street name, which is there, it does now recognize that this is uh, the street Zeil in Etten Lure, uh, but there's also a Zeil Makerstraat, another street in Etten Lure, which you may mean as well because you're not really typing yet. And then when you continue typing uh, with specific house number, it recognizes, ah, you mean this address in Ettenlur. I have no idea who lives there, but right now they're famous. <laughs> and then when you um, select, yes, this is, where, this is where I come from, and this is where I want to go to, the actual address, it, it, uh, well, sorry, the actual route it suggests uh, combines different things. So you have to walk for seven minutes. You can actually, in Google Maps, see, well, I, I start here, I need to go there, you need to go to the right, then take a bus, then walk to the station, then take in the city train to The Hague, etc. All of those things are combined. So you can imagine that even the routing is quite complex. But this also means that it's very important for the auto-completion or the first part of the selection of the, of the place to be very precise. If you have if you mean I'm, I'm going to walk from this street and the street is very long and there's a bus station just one block here and there's a bus station here, you really want to know which, block, which bus station you need to walk to. So it's very important to understand where you are also in complete GPS coordinates. So the data, what we, um, 
what we have in there is about 10 million different points. Uh, of course, all the train and metro stations, all the bus stops, we know where they are, how they are grouped together. We know the GPS locations in the Netherlands, where they are. Uh, places of interest, like schools and museums and things like that. Also, all the types, different types of aliases that people use to identify them. The streets, where they are, um, what the names are, and for a long street, the, the center of that street. But we also have street ranges, which is um, from a different database saying, well, for this long Laan van Meerdervoort street, we have numbers 2 to 42, only even. They're actually here, and this is the GPS location. And number 44 to 60 are here. And the numbers 5 to 65, uneven, are here. So even that is a, a, a different part. And for some specific elements, we have even the exact address. The, uh, so we know for a specific house, this is this house, is exactly there. But we do not have the complete GPS location of every house of the Netherlands, unfortunately. So we have to do some approximation. If you have like this Zeil number 10, we have to use, well, we don't know exactly where Zeil 10 is, but we know it's even, and we know that Zeil 2 to 14 is here. So that's good enough for um, the approximation. Uh, of course, the data comes from different sources, is very, very dirty, ugly, incorrect, ambiguous, um, well, <laughs> as any data, right? And still, it's still, um, uh, it's still very problematic to get uh, lead in and gold out, so we have to work with that data and try to understand. Also, what's interesting about this domain, and I think it's common for many of the domains we have, is that this is a highly ambiguous domain. Many street and city names and point of interest names have the exact same thing in them, right? We'd have a city Groningen and a city Leeuwarden, and there would be a street, Groninger Street in Leeuwarden, and there would be a Leeuwarden Street in Groningen because they're connected, and there's things that, well, it's a complete mess. If you start typing something, it's, well, the larger names, Amsterdam, no problem, but there's so many, little, so many little villages where street names are completely ridiculous, or they have a museum for, that has a specific name in them. This, is, this, is, this makes it very hard to understand if, or from only a small part of data that people are typing in a single input box, what do they actually mean? And of course, there's spelling mistakes. It's very common for people to misspell Dorpstraat with only one S, well, it's actually two S's, or all of those different things, especially if you're on a mobile phone with autocorrect. <laughs> and one other problem is that there's no specific single order. People, sometimes, well, what we'd like to have is people search, first type in the, the city name, Amsterdam, comma, Weiselgracht 24. That would be really nice because it sort of zooms in, but people don't do that. They start Weiselgracht, Amsterdam, and then they sort of, the order is, is different. We cannot assume that the order is from top to bottom. So all of these things makes it, make it very hard to use, um, to do auto-completion. So how would we do naive auto-completion, normal auto-completion? Uh, we're using solar for this. Um, we'd use one concatenated field in Lucene. Um, and make sure we tune the tokenizer and analyzer to correctly work with all these different parts. So we have one canonic, uh, canonic addre address form to say, well, it's always Amsterdam, Weiselgracht 80, or Central Station, Amsterdam, Amsterdam comma Central Station, whatever you define. And then when you search, you use also the same analyzer and some extra query analyzers to sort of think, oh, this is probably what you mean. And then you sort of try to tune the weights of different fields and how you do fuzzy or not fuzzy. And this is like turning on a knob. The, one of the problems here is that the only thing you can really use is syntax only. You can only know from the, stri from the strings what is happening there. And part of the reason why we felt uh, last year that this was not good enough um, is, is the following. If you, if you have um, effort over here and quality of your autocompletion over there, with a little bit of effort, you can make an autocompletion much better. It will improve. Right? You could just, ah, I know some queries, um, I need to analyze this. But then with the same amount of effort, the next time it, you can get it better, but it gets a little bit harder to make it as good as before, right? And then I think you can see where this is going. Over time, with the same amount of effort, it gets, you get less and less incremental um, positive results in, with a tuning mechanism like this. So this goes to an asymptote of quality which I think is very common. Um, you can get to a fairly high, re a high precision of this, getting the right results out of that, but getting really over a certain threshold is really, really hard. And that's why we felt that um, the naive mechanism, because we wanted to have 
a really good uh, auto completion for this uh, for this site um, may not be um, may not be good enough. It is as if you are designing a fishnet and are designing the holes in the fishnet to specifically only catch a certain types of type of fish, which works nice. And then you think, oh, I have this fish. Oh, it's a little bit more wide or it's more square or let's do it like this. But any time you make it more precise. You also you also lose data, or if you widen it up, um, uh, so some data you will not, some of the elements you want, you will not get. I think this is why it's very hard to tune these things beyond a certain threshold of quality. And then um, we thought about how can we improve on that, and we had a very simple idea, what we call field inspection. Um, and what we wanted to do is we wanted to take advantage of the number of fields. Usually it works in your disadvantage. If you just have one field, just the name of somebody, it's much easier. But all those different fields and types, we can actually use that to our advantage. Secondly, we're using Lucene, which is ridiculously fast. So things we couldn't have dreamt to do 15, 20 years ago, we can do easily now. So what did we do? Um, we analyzed the query, cut it up in different words. And then for each word, before we do the actual query, we just, each word, we test and query it in all the fields in the database. So we create a big matrix. And what do we count? We don't, we don't care about the results. We don't care about how many results there are. We just measure, are there any results? So are the counts larger than zero? If not, we know, well, whatever the user typed in here, we can be sure this is not a city name. And if we have seven words or five words, and there's only one that could actually mean the city name, well, Maybe that is the city name. Maybe the other ambiguous word, that's a street name, then no longer is a city name. And we can use semantics like that to really tune on what's happening. And I think that's a very simple idea um, that you can run really, really fast on the scene uh, that is useful for many high-faceted, multi-field search engines, like I guess many of you can have as well. So we can do a little bit more of a semantic interpretation. So what does that mean? We'd have, for this query, like Atten, Lure, and Zeil, we have a whole bunch, this is a bit simplified, of course, um, all different fields, and we say, well, is there a city that will return a match, an exact match, if we do something with uh, Atten and Lure? It turns out to be Atten, Lure, uh, with or without dashes, but there's also a city called Lure. I never heard about that. But there's no city called Zeil, or something like that. Uh, and not even Zeil star, because we can do prefix matches because you were typing Zeil. And this, there's bus stops for Eton, street names, um, and all of those things sort of give, give us an idea about um, what do all these things mean. Uh, because Zeil is not a city, and he typed in three words, it's likely that some of the others is a city, um, especially because there are multiple streets Zeil in many different places. So what we can then do is do a search for, well, what if um, Eton Lur is a city? Is there a street in Eton Lur? This overlap. Or not. If so, it gets even more uh, higher, higher, um, uh, more likely that this is what the, what he means. And all of those things are just done before the before the computation. So we've implemented this in Scala uh, as a Lucene request handler in Solar uh, with an AJAX front end, and this is the little code that actually just checks to see if, for a certain query and a certain type, we have something there. Puts it in a set, um, and all of this code is done really fast. As you can see, I like my code colored on black, because everybody knows that code on black runs faster. <laughs> and then this is how you use it then somewhere later. This is, of course, a large heuristic piece of code, but you do a query. If it's for a certain case, you try to, well, try to find the street and only the terms that are, in, that are indeed a street. Let's see here we find the place and combine those with and or queries, get the top five. And only then we have a fallback mechanism to less precise and less precise and less precise matches, all the way to the bottom where we just fall back to the naive implementation. This allows us, on this fishnet metaphor, to pick out a certain, certain elements that are, that are hard to do otherwise manually, as, as if it was manually, so that the rest of the fishnet will actually catch what we wanted to. So, um, how did we do tuning? We did a lot of iterative tuning, and one of the great things we also did is use real user input from production logs. And it turns out that they didn't really have production logs before this project, so we had to really parse Apache log files uh, uh, and get real user data. 
And that has proven to be really valuable in tuning. And what we're doing is creating a batch script that tests new versions of the software all the time, checks to see, well, how does it get better? Are the results that we want for, certain of, for some of these things in the top result or in the top five, because we're showing five? And if we increase and change the parameters of the tuning, does it get better over time? So some, so some conclusions. This site is pro has uh, gotten a lot of very positive feedback. Before it was, well, not really useful. <laughs> um, and now, now it is. A lot of my friends, uh, they, they say it's an excellent, uh, excellent job. I only made a small part of it. So the guys from Q42 really, uh, uh, did a really great job there. Um, and one of the things that was proven to be very valuable for this part is this iterative tuning, regression testing based on real data. And of course, Lucene is fast. The entire type ahead needs to be incredibly fast with low latency. And this is all done within the 40 milliseconds, including all those different queries that we do even before the actual auto-completion. Uh, right now, uh, the implementation partner is currently, uh, unfortunately, um, uh, evaluating going back a little bit to naive-only approach. Um, and this is not just because of the uh, technolo technology. It's not only about technology, but it's also about how do you do knowledge transfer and where do you want to, how much heuristics do you want in your system? Um, so we're discussing that, how, uh, how, uh, whether that's good. And it, I can understand that sometimes good enough is good enough. Uh, I'm curious to see how far they will get with the uh, more naive uh, implementation and whether it will, better, will be better than what we have now. In general, this field inspection, I think, is a very simple idea that's very easy for you to implement on your system. And I'd really like to encourage you to do that. And all in the end, you can just fall back to a naive, naive uh, syntactic approach. Uh, I had very limited time, but this um, talk will uh, auto-complete itself. Um, so that means that the, the rest of the talk, uh, you can implement yourself tonight in your hotel room by just doing the same trick uh, on your, in your application. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thanks for the tip with the colored code. <laughs> I retired. Are there any questions? Okay, I can see that you're performing full Lucene queries for auto-completion. Have you thought about inspecting the term dictionary uh, instead for performance reasons? Because that's often done in auto-completion. Yes, uh, we, we could, um, but this was so ridiculously fast already mm. um, that we didn't need to optimize for it. Mm. So the queries were fast enough. Yeah, and, and correct. Wasn't and a problem. we have a set of 10 million only, right? Mm. So we do some end queries, only all the streets or only addresses. So this is, we have one solar box to handle it, and most of it is, in, is cached in memory. All of those additional queries, well, we mm. just do 50 or to 100 of those additional pre-queries and all of those mm. things together, they don't take more than five milliseconds or something. So mm. yeah, we could improve on that mm. even more, but the customer has not, uh, not yet asked me to do so. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, the system that you use here is uh, based entirely on the search index that you have. Have you thought about approaches that also take into account user input and um, you know the, the stuff that people actually search for and whether um, they use a certain autocomplete suggestion and make it learn over time from that? Yeah, so make like a feedback loop to see, well, we've suggested these five and only they, they continue typing, which means that, well, these five are probably not good enough. They clicked on number three, so they try to learn from that. Yeah, well, that's, that's something that we would love to learn uh, more in the future. Yeah. Just one step at a time. Thanks for the talk. Uh, the query is, uh, uh, you, you told that uh, you do, do a, for each term a query in all the fields. And after, how can you decide what is the results to show? You combine uh, uh, that uh, one term could be only in one field result, and you found all the documents that respect uh, all the fields. How, how do you decide the results, uh, the list? Yeah, well, we have some heuristics in place to say, 
Well, um, if, if a user types, if, if or in all the terms that he typed in, we have something that seems to be a place, and we have some address, and there's a, a street name in it, let's think, let's search for whether that's true, and add those results. In many cases, because there will, it will just give no results, and then we will continue with the next. So we have very strict rules, sort of cascaded rules that add things that we know, and to it going to the bottom, it will get more wider and wider, etc. But it, it does mean that if we have an exact match, that as a human you would say, why does this autocomplete doesn't understand me? Um, we can actually get, bring those to the top and sort of magically think, ah, we know what you mean. Thanks. Okay, I'm sorry, but we are running out of time. We just have a five-minute break to, for the next. Good. Well, okay. thank you. So thanks and.